Hey viewers, it's Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store. We're in beautiful Canmore and we're here with the beautiful Nick Devlin. Beautiful yeah. to be here, Chris. <laughs> now, Nick, you've come out from back east to Calgary. You've been a friend of ours for a long, long time. You know, friend of the store for a long time. And uh, I know why you came out here. You came out here to get your brand new Nikon D800E, didn't you? I did, and uh, that's it's very important that everybody <laughs> can see it's an 800E. It's why it's on the strap. Absolutely, uh, I like that they advertise it. E is for exclusive, and uh, Nick, I think, uh, is, I don't know, you're one of maybe six people in the world that has a D800E, I don't know. Well, Nikon <laughs> has some, some crazy guy in uh, Thailand, comes down from the hills, he builds two or th three of these a week and goes back out and shoots landscapes. Yeah, and, so. and, and, they and gave, I've got one. They gave so one really to us it. in Calgary, we gave it to you. And thank you. And we're out here to shoot landscape photography because, you know, folks, we've been doing a lot of videos recently on the D800 versus the 5D Mark III, and I know a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, it's not ideal for sports and action, why are you guys doing that? You know, Know, well, this is what the D800E especially is for. It's for outdoor work like this, hey? Well, we're doing the switcheroo. I normally shoot with the Pentax 645, which is a yeah. fantastic outdoor camera. And today I'm trying the 800E and you've got the Pentax. Absolutely. So. And I should know, I love the Pentax 645D. I think it's a fantastic camera in the way it shoots. It's ideal for outdoor field work. You get high megapixels, uh, you know, great dynamic range, good lenses, and of course it's rugged and weather sealed. But the D800E might have some serious advantages. Well, let's eh? see what it can do. Absolutely. Let's head out and see what let's we can do. get. All right, Nick. So we're out here shooting some long exposures, of course. The token long exposure you at do the Riverside. It. You got to do it. Um, you know, what's cool about both these cameras that I love is we've got rain falling on us here, and we don't give a damn. Hey, I mean, it's fantastic. I mean, when you have thousands of dollars of camera sitting on your tripod and you see water spots, you get nervous, but you have confidence at the end of the day Absolutely. that it's not going to crash on you. I mean, we did terrible things to this camera in our in our specific 6 for 5 d video. Nikons, I know everybody loves to baby them, but they can take serious abuse. And the 800E is fully sealed, makes it ideal for outdoor work like this. I mean, right? we're not in a studio. This is the real world. It is going to get wet. You are going to splash it once in a while. Absolutely. And it's a great relief to know that it's not going to just sort of kick up its legs in the air and go undead. <laughs> so. Now, one thing, of course, I do notice, I mean, Pentax 6 for 5D, and you've, you've had this problem too, I think, is I'm taking shots here in RAW, right, today, and uh, I'm waiting a good four seconds to, to see my photo, right? And I mean, landscape is all about chimping, right? I mean, when you say I'm waiting four seconds to see my photo, it sounds kind of funny. Yeah. But the reality is, if you shoot, especially a sequence, oh, absolutely. and then it's going to take 25 or 30 seconds to write out, that is irritating. Yeah. And that's one of the weaknesses of the Pentax. I do like it kind of right now. And yeah, and it is just quick. Yeah, it's it right quick now. And Absolutely. I hear bears are attracted to uh, fancy camera equipment. Well, that's why you got the bear spray there. And uh, fortunately, <laughs> I can probably run faster than you, so because my camera's lighter. <laughs> so I think we feel pretty safe. This isn't this isn't a daddy belly, Nick. Okay, this is filters and a lav mic in here. All right. So, so in, they say. I'm in prime physical shape. So I'm shooting, a, I'm shooting some detail here, and I just want to get a bit of richer color out of that lichen. So I'm using a polarizer, and I don't really like to use the right filter size for lenses. I just carry one. This is a Lee 105. I can hold this in front of any lens I want. I don't see the big deal. There we go. I got two hands. Nice. See? One polarizer. That'll do it all. So Chris, you've been shooting with the Nikon for the last little while. How do you find the Pentax in terms of its responsiveness? Well, I mean, the Pentax focus is nice and quick for a landscape camera, no yeah. problem. Obviously, though, a Nikon D800D is going to have faster frame rate, and you're going to get faster focusing. I mean, if we had wildlife start to walk through here, you'd have a much better chance of capturing that. I would be sitting here, turning off my mirror lock, I'm turning off my self-timer, trying to get shots with the slow autofocus in comparison. So, you know, that being said, for landscape, as a field camera, it's excellent. I love the control layout. Everything is at your fingertips on this camera. It really is convenient. I picked it up the first time. I never looked at the manual. Yeah, I no. just always enjoyed it out of the box. It was the first medium format that to me felt like a real photographer's camera. It really does shoot like a 35 mil SLR, you know, in yeah. that kind of format. But yeah, just fantastic to use. But you can go and get a coffee before the preview comes up. Yeah, that's true. Let's see, is it ready? Oh, there, there we go. go. I personally never had any issue with the focus speed on the Pentax for anything. No, no, no. A couple of the lenses though, sometimes I wasn't sure that my focus was spot on and that's the thing with a sensor that yeah. with that high resolution is there's no margin of error. Yeah, especially if you're shooting wide open, I mean, yeah, you've got very, very, very slim movement there to go. But I uh, know the focusing is pretty good. Let's see how your camera handles Let's this. Let's try you can, the same thing with an I let you borrow my tripod Ooh. slash the store's tripod, it's not mine.
both of these cameras, you can zoom in beyond one to one. I mean, it's subjective, the, the two, three ratio frame lines. I know you like a, having more of a kind of three fourths kind of frame. I just think most of the time you either want to be more rectangular or less rectangular than the 35 mil frame. And I wish the camera makers would get out of 1930s and <laughs> figure out that, you know, it was like image fault, circles Nick, are it was circular. like his fault right at the start. Okay, well, what we isn't like his fault? We can blame him for everything. <laughs> so Chris, what do you think? Shall we uh, go up the mountain? See what else we find? Well, Nick, why don't we take the uh, Lada? I mean, we need a four by four up there. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Why not, man? It's a fantastic I, vehicle. Yeah. I love this thing. I drive this every day. I have a D800E. I have a reason to live now. I'm not getting in this jalopy of communist depression. Are you kidding me? It's a good thing this camera's weather sealed because we're getting some weather now. Yeah, we're getting snow sideways, actually. Literally. Literally sideways. Literally sideways. And, and of course, faces. directly into the lens. Yeah, absolutely. You want to take the shot? Yeah, let's, uh, let's see how long you keep the lens dry. All right, Nick, now I know uh, the D800E, one of the big concerns people has is, of course, Moiré, right? Because of the fact there's no, well, a modified filter that right. should uh, should unfortunately allow Moiré to occur more regularly, um, we, we should have a problem with the D800E. But that being said, everybody who's tried it and tested it has had a really hard time finding it, hey? Well, so we're in search of it here. Yeah. We've got this uh, silo in the distance. Exactly. Let's see if we get any more yeah, now this silo does have very, very fine detail, and we're going to shoot from quite a distance away, and so we'll see if we do get it. This should do it. So let's try this with the D800E. Okay, so we're shooting at about F10. I mean, higher apertures should give us a little bit more MRA likely to happen. There we go. All right, let's see. Do you see anything on there? <laughs> I really don't, uh, Nick. Actually, it looks like it handled it very, very well. Let's go to a slightly darker frame. Zoom all the way in. No, I don't see anything. Yeah, I mean, we've got fine detail from far away, but uh, the camera has no problem recording. In fact, it looks great. Extremely fine repeating patterns, nothing. Yeah. All right, so I want to get you know nice and low, shoot the water surface here, and we're trying out the brand new Pentax 25 mil uh, for the Pentax 645D. Beautiful brand new lens, totally weather sealed, very, very nice sort of 20 millimeter equivalent. Uh, let's see how it goes. Now that being said, I'm going to lay down some cold, wet rock because I don't have live view unlike Nick Devlin, but here we go. Oh, lock your ball head. So let's see how this Zeiss 21 does on the Nikon compared to this fancy new Pentax 25. Your Zeiss is gonna lose. Well, for $6,000, it better lose. <laughs> you know, it hasn't been a good day shooting if you're not wet and a little bit muddy. So Chris, you gotta show more respect to the camera. Put a strap on it, for God's sake. You, you know, know? I, I just, I'm not a big fan of straps, Nick. Both cameras handled beautifully, didn't they? Yeah, the 800E, it's very easy to use. It's light, great selection of lenses. And when we put the files side by side, there wasn't much to pick between yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, as we look through these photos, Nick, I mean, both cameras are sharp. Uh, the lenses are, are exactly what we want for landscape. Uh, we're getting tons of resolution. I mean, the Pentax has a slight advantage, but it's yeah. so slight. And I mean, looking at things like dynamic range, uh, I think we could come to the same conclusions that we sort of did with the D800 versus the Hasselblad uh, video that we did. This Highlights sensor, come back a little bit better. Just little a bit better. little bit better off there. Shadows on the Nikon. Absolutely. You just keep digging till you hit pure blackness. It's amazing. <laughs> exactly, they, exactly. Really, they really open up. Well. I mean, the Pentax sensor, of course, great as well for uh, for blacks uh, and pulling out shadows. And really, the, the fact is that both cameras handled 
all the contrast that we had today, all the light that we had today, no problem. We look at the Pentax, we look at the Nikon, both files are so close. Yeah, anti-aliasing filters are so 2001. It's absolutely, just, it's absolutely. over, it's and, and we didn't get any moiré. Nobody yeah. on the internet is really getting yeah. any moiré in any situations. We're not gonna get it in landscape. Never like gonna this. see it in landscape. I actually don't think you're gonna see it much at all with this camera, to be honest. But again, we gotta remember, here's the thing. This camera is giving us very similar files. I would even say, in my opinion, slightly sharper in some cases than the Pentax. It just, looks that way. I think once we process them, the difference would be almost invisible negligible at yeah. the end of the day. But what isn't negligible is that this is costing 3300 bucks Canadian. This is still pushing 10. And uh, I mean, you've got so many more lenses yeah. for this tilt shift, better macros. Uh, it's lighter. There's so much more accessories and gears you can put on that. Too. There's no excuse not to be out shooting whatever you've got. I don't know, Nick is, I mean, you know, landscape photographers who use this, they're going to love it. But That's is right. this the death of these? Uh, time will tell. But the 800E has made 35mm finally catch up. Absolutely. Medium format in an SLR size body. I would certainly say that yep. based on the image quality we had today. I don't think it's an overstatement at all. And you know, Nick, thank you so much for coming out with us. We had fun. We got some landscape shots and we got to uh, to really put these cameras through their paces. And, uh, we Always fantastic you. to come home to the mountains and see you guys at the camera store. Great. Thanks a lot. And TCS viewers, we are going to make a part three of our D800 versus 5D Mark III video. I know you guys have been patiently waiting. It's coming up. So until then, we'll see you later.